Grade 6 math number 10.5, solve multiplication and division equations for x. Okay, as I said before, a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown number, and a solution of an equation is the value of a variable that makes the equation true. So 3y equals 6, the y would have to equal 2 to make the equation true. So the value of this variable, y, is 2. To solve an equation for x, we need to isolate x on one side of the equal sign, and we do this by using the inverse operation of the sign in the equation. The division property of equality says if we divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number, the two sides will remain equal. So if we have 3 times 4 equals 12, and we divide both sides by 3, What's going to happen is this is going to cancel out this 3, and that's going to turn into a 4, and we're going to end up having a 4 equals 4. So if that was the variable, we'd know the variable was 4. So take this example, okay? We've got 3y equals 12. If we divide both sides by 3, this cancels this 3 out, and we end up with y is equal to 4. See? 12 divided by 3 is 4. And we don't need to write the 1 in front of the y. We know there's only one y here. Whenever you see a variable by itself, we know there's a 1 in front of it. Okay? All right. If we have 15d equals 150, we can divide both sides by the 15 to isolate the d. 15 divided by 15 is 1. 150 divided by 15 is 10. So we know that the, the 1d is equal to 10, or d is equal to 10. See? Even with fractions, if we've got 5, 6, x equals 1 12th, we can divide both sides by the 5, 6. Do you remember how to divide fractions? If it's 5, 6 divided by 5, 6, x equals 1 12th divided by 5, 6, because we're dividing each side by 5, 6, what we do is we turn it upside down, and we multiply its reciprocal. Remember 6 over 5? We, we turn this into a multiplication and we flip it so that the 6 is the numerator and the 5 is the denominator. Remember that's how we multiply fractions? So we end up getting uh, this 5 canceling out that 5 and this 6 canceling out that 6. So we end up with a 1x and then there's one six here and two sixes here in the 12, so that's a one and that's a two. And we end up with one x is equal to one tenth, because two times five is 10. So x is equal to one tenth, see? So any number divided by itself is gonna be one. See, five divided by five is one, two divided by two is one, five six divided by five six is one, all right? Then we've got the multiplication property of equality, and it says, if we multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, the two sides will remain equal. So we can cancel out with multiplication. So remember, fractions are little division problems, all right? So this is if one of the numbers, like the 20, was the variable. If we've got 20 over 4 equals 5, we can multiply both sides by 4, and this 4 will cancel out that 4, and we'll end up with 1 times 20 over 1. 20 over 1 is equal to 20 over 1. See? So this is what it would look like with variables. If it was a variable over 4 equals 5, see? A variable over 4 equals 5. It would be, uh, we would multiply this side and this side of the equal sign times 4. And to do that, we put the 4 over a 1 as a whole number. So we're going to multiply 4 over 1 times y over 4. And that's going to equal 5 over 1, because we're turning this into a fraction. We do it by writing 5 over 1 to make it an improper fraction, times 4 over 1. Well, this 4 cancels out that 4, so we end up with 1y over 1 is equal to 20 over 1, which is 1y is equal to 20 over 1, or y is equal to 20. See? So it'd be just like here. See? So we can use multiplication to multiply each side of a division problem, because fractions are little division problems, to help us solve them, okay? So remember, we don't need to write the 1. When we just see a b or a y or an x, we know that there's just one of them there. We know that's just one y. 
And whenever we see a variable by itself, we know there's an invisible one in front of it, okay? So remember, to solve addition or subtraction equations to find x, we use the inverse operations. It's the same with multiplication and division. We can solve for x using the inverse operation to isolate x to one side of the equal sign. And remember, to check to see if our solution is correct, the value for the variable, we plug it into the equation to see if it's true. And if it is, we know we've got the right answer. We know we found the value of the variable, okay? We're going to keep talking about x and variables, and I hope this was really helpful. I hope I explained it well enough. Sorry about the shaking, and I'll see you next video, okay? Bye.